It's the NFL on EA Sports. And the question is, are you ready for some football? It's the Tennessee Titans and the Detroit Lions. All that and more coming up next. Coming to you from the venue that hosted the Super Bowl back in February of 06. Welcome to Ford Field in downtown Detroit. With Charles Davis, as always, I'm Brandon Gauden. Now, Charles, you and I, we've done a lot of games together. It always seems like we're rehashing the same storylines. Turnovers, of course, always a big story. Quarterback play, running backs, yada, yada, yada. But getting ready for this one, one word kept coming to mind, and that's preparation. Well, it's critical to be prepared physically, mentally. When you think about getting ready for an NFL game, you have to wonder, what will they throw at us that maybe we haven't seen before? Two-minute drill, maybe different things like that. Got to be prepared. You're exactly right. The putter, Jack Fox, has us ready to go, and we are underway here at Ford Field. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. So the Titans set to go to work for the first time. As we take a peek at the Oklahoma State product, their quarterback, Mason Rudolph. And you can make a strong argument that he was the Steelers' best quarterback a season ago. It wasn't anything flashy about his game by any means, but it brought a level of stability that they desperately needed, and they rode that consistency all the way to the playoffs. He's now tasked with trying to replicate that success here, and there's no reason, with his confidence this high, that he won't be able to do that. Rudolph going to throw it to start out. That finds the former Jaguar, Calvin Ridley. And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. And I think this is a route we'll see more of as this game goes on because with his speed, they want to get him the ball in space on drag routes just like this. They want him to get the ball and run after the catch. Good job there, though, holding him for a short game. The first carry now for Tony Pollard, and he'll be brought down right around the 37. Able to get the one yard he needed, but nothing more. Second and one, and people want to run the football. This is where every back in the league is supposed to do exactly what we just saw there, pick up the first down. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Now Rudolph. Throwing over the middle, but it's incomplete. He was waving his arms, wanted the football, but he dropped it. And that reminds me of a story you told me from your days at Tennessee. We don't need to mention the other guy's name, but when he dropped an open pass that you blew coverage on, what did you say to him? Yeah, it was really not right since I blew coverage, but <laughs> since he dropped the pass, I said, well, maybe next time he'll just walk it out here and hand it to you. Would that be easier? He wasn't, real, th he wasn't real thrilled with that. That's cold-blooded. Cold-blooded. <laughs> Throw out wide is incomplete. Well, he left no doubt about that one because even though he hasn't left the pocket, he's got a receiver in the area, so it's not grounding, even though there was no way that ball was going to be caught. So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has him staring at a third and ten. From the gun, here's Rudolph. Well, this will be incomplete. The rush gets home just as he was letting that go. That could have been worse. Instead, it's fourth down. One first down here, and that's all, folks. Good work by this defense to hold things in check and force a punting situation. Now on fourth down, here's Ryan Stonehouse to punt for Tennessee. Back deep, Khalif Raymond. And a fair catch called for and made at the 12-yard line. And out come the Lions for their first drive behind their ninth-year quarterback in year number four with Detroit. It's Jared Goff. It's hardly an exaggeration to say that Goff has revitalized his career these last couple of years. And he's rewarded for it during the offseason as Detroit has certainly made sure everyone knows he's their quarterback for the future. It's clear that they believe in him, and he's done nothing to sway them from that belief. Goff in this Lions offense set for a first and 10 at their own 13. First carry now for David Montgomery. 
And he almost gets this to the 30, taken down about a yard shy. Successful start to the drive, 17 yards. It moves the sticks. Montgomery with a nice game there, really nice run. And he's come up a strong first season in Detroit. They saw him top 1,000 yards rushing for just the second time in his career. He is perfect for the culture the Lions have built. First down, they run again. Here's Montgomery. And he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. Well, any lane that might have been open there was closed pretty quickly, and that was because the defensive front, they won that battle at the point of attack at the line of scrimmage. They used great leverage, held their spot, and stacked him up. From the 31, here's a second and eight. They'll keep pounding here with Montgomery. And takes this one across the 35 to the 36, a gain of about four. When you find that kind of yardage, you couldn't be more confident as a ball carrier. And guess what? You're going to go back and tell your offensive coordinator, I'd like to keep carrying it, thank you. Now golf. Setting up the screen. This is Gibbs. And he'll be out of bounds, but able to get it up past the 45. They'll get a dozen there, and the Lions have a first down. So after several rushes to start the game, Charles, they go to the air there and get a nice completion. Nice mix-up on the play call, and right establish the running game, make the defense think you're going to do it again, and then hit them over the top. Now you've got them betwixt and between. They don't know which way you're going to come at them. Well, yeah, that one drops down incomplete. Good coverage there, forced the ball free, and it's second down. Well, that one was all about the defender making life difficult for the receiver. Very tough for a guy to hold on to the football through all that contact. He ends up forcing the incompletion. After the incomplete pass here now is second and ten. Call. They'll let this go for the end zone. That's going to be knocked away and incomplete. And that's where you're counting on a receiver size being an advantage. They were hoping he could go up the top of a smaller DB and haul that one in. A good thought, but that time it didn't work out. Here comes the seventh play now of this drive as this is third and ten. In motion left here, one of their tight ends. Now a play fake, and it's golf. And throwing left sideline there. But it's incomplete. Ah, that's well done defensively. They get the pressure they needed on third down. All the receivers are locked up tight, and they force that quarterback to just throw it away. Jack Fox out to punt here on fourth down. And he couldn't get it to check up. That kicks all the way into the end zone for a touchback. The Titans coming back onto the field for their second drive. The last series for them, a little disappointing, forced to punt. And now they'll try to do better here and come away with some points as they begin this drive, first and ten. Here's Rudolph. And that is incomplete. Oh, the coverage a little too good there, and it's second down. I know at times people think we use it too often, but you've got to be able to throw guys open. And when you read zone, you've got to stick it in there before your receiver gets to the next guy in the zone. Otherwise, you bring him into the play. And that's precisely what allowed that defense to disrupt the pass. Here's Rudolph. Incomplete. Tight end has become a bigger and bigger part of the passing game in the NFL. But if you drop the football, that position can get swapped out with a you know, wide receiver in that spot, a running back in that spot. There are other ways they can go if you're not going to catch the ball. And that's not just his first drop, his second drop of the game. Shotgun snap for Rudolph. Flushed out right. And he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. 
Nothing open downfield. He keeps it himself for 11 and a first down. I'm not sure he falls under the category of mobile quarterback, but he's athletic enough that if you don't keep your rush lanes intact, he finds a way to hurt you. As coaches like to say, I wouldn't call him a burner, but enough there in the tank. They'll go with Pollard here on first down. And he gets this up to the 34 out of bounds there. So that run play nullified by the holding call on the tight end. Yeah, I just think he needs to get off the ball a lot quicker and get into the block a little bit more effectively. Then he doesn't have to reach and grab and try and hold on. In motion right is Ridley. Now he's going to get it on the jet sweep. And this time they were ready for him as they'll stop him right at the line of scrimmage. Tackle there from James Houston. And he got off the end there very quickly to make that play. Yeah, it was almost like the bullet train, wasn't it? I mean, just zoom, quick, quick, quick. And what a terrific play, holding them to no game. They'll fake the handoff. Now Rudolph. Open man, Westbrook Aquino. And all the way down to the 36-yard line. A big play that time for the Titans. 42 yards. When teams practice their plays during the week, they're hoping that it's going to pay off on game day. So it sure has to feel good for them when they hit them during a game. And they hit that one there for big yardage. So the ball moves into Lion territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 36. They'll bring a receiver in motion left. And they're going to give it to him on the jet sweep. Oh, and this one, him may need to go back to the drawing board. He's going to be swallowed up right away. The defense showing some anger after giving up the big play. This time, they'll lose one or two. That's the danger, Charles, of running plays like this for your wide receiver. They can hit big, or they can be duds. Yeah, you're exactly right about that, because if they're forced to try and go around defenders behind the line of scrimmage, sometimes you can give yardage in order to gain it. But in this case, they gave yardage and didn't get it back. They get 11 back on that one. It leads to third down. They're trying to keep the drive going. This will be play number eight. It's third and two. Here's Rudolph off play action. He's got his target. That's complete. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. Uh, he's trying to protect his quarterback's blind side. Got nabbed for the hole. You have one job over there. Make sure that man does not get hit. So if you have to hold occasionally, do so because they don't catch all of them. This time they did. A short throw taken in by Conquo. And it's going to be another first down as they'll get him to the ground at the Lions 21. That one good for a pickup of 15 for Tennessee. And it's a real luxury when you have a guy who can turn a short throw into a solid gain at any moment. Once he caught that ball, he ID'd where the open grass was and got there in a hurry to pick up a new set of downs for his offense. They run straight ahead here with Pollard. And they'll get to him just inside the 15. Even after the strong run we just saw, they're able to corral him quickly defensively. It's a six-yard gain on the ground, and that'll make it second and four. Here's Pollard again. And they get to him quickly here as he stopped right around the 13. And they got half of what he needed there, two yards, and it'll bring up a third and two more. Watching that play unfold and watching him complete it brought back memories of doing all those pursuit drills to make sure you don't over-pursue and let a guy get a cutback laying on you. He did that very well. You praised him on tape yesterday for the angles that he takes to the ball. Took a great angle right there. On a heavy rush and down he goes. And the defense coming through on third down. A loss of seven to bring up four. But it's about how teams are so competitively matched and you just want to make those plays that give you an advantage. How about right here? The difference between let them score a touchdown versus holding them to a field goal? 
That's absolutely huge with the play he just made. And you know he hated taking the loss there on third down. The folks kick is good and the Titans hit the scoreboard first it's three to nothing so after drive number three here we have a score and it's three points after the field goal I would say the feeling out process for both these teams I'd say it's over partner everyone understands what's going on now you've kind of probed a little bit now you want to start throwing the big shots first three points up on the board could be significant the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. Back onto the field come the Lions for their second overall drive. Defense got the better of them last series, forcing a punt. See if they make a few changes in the game plan here and try to get points out of this drive. First and 10. From the gun, here's Goff. That's caught. It's Sam Laporta. And give him six yards here as he's stopped near the 35 at the 34. I think defensively you're okay with that. You're in the first quarter. He's going to get some catches, but they rallied to him quickly. And that's what you count on, and I like what you just said. First quarter, can you do it all game long? They catch it, you tackle, and they go down on the spot. Because when you're able to do that and you don't give up big chunks of yardage after the catch, now you put the offense in a position where every series you have to work hard to pick up first downs and you tend to stall them out when you do that. Well, hang on now. We're going to pause here. We've got an injured player. Well, now they're going to come out and take a look at this injury and we'll be back in a moment. They'll run for the first time with a speedster, Jameer Gibbs. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. You don't see that a ton, do you? With the cornerback coming over to the middle of the field to make a run tackle. That's someone with a ton of confidence to feel like nothing is pressuring him on his side of the field. Sees that the ball's moved to the middle and just sprints over there to help out. He ends up getting the tackle. Well played toward the center of the field, but it's incomplete. So he's three for seven throwing the football right now. Not an awful start, but also not the sharpest of starts. No, I would agree with that, but if you're a confident quarterback and to play that position, you have to be. You just act like there's something wrong with the wind currents or something wrong with the ball. <laughs> it is not you. Keep throwing. That timing usually develops. From the gun on third down, golf. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man to play. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Titans' 41-yard line. 17 yards on the pickup there, and the drive will continue. And that's well executed there on third down, and I love the confidence that they had to let their tight end try and find some space in the middle of the field right in their quarterback's line of vision. And QBs love to make that easy throw, and they hooked up there for a first down. They'll bring a tight end in motion left. First down, here's the run with Montgomery. And he'll go down here at the 35-yard line. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. A quick burst there, and he nicely bit off a pretty decent gain. From the 35, back to work on second and four. Play action. Here's golf. Blitz coming and down he goes. 
Multiple players combined for their team's first sack of the game. Now that's a heck of a moment for your first sack of the game because if this long drive ends without a touchdown because of that sack, we're going to look back and say that might be one of the biggest plays of this contest. So now following the sack, Goff and the Lions needing to come up with something here on third and long. On third down, he'll drop to throw. Oh, he's going to let this go for the end zone. And it's knocked away and incomplete. They decided the opportunity was there and launched a deep ball, but he was unable to get away from the defender, couldn't create space, couldn't uncover at the end of the route, and that one winds up incomplete. On fourth down, Jack Fox on to punt for Detroit. Tennessee offense set to go again. They've got a 3-0 lead and the football as they start first and 10. In motion is Westbrook Aquina. He'll get it here on the jet sweep. And he's going to get seven out of this before being taken down at the 27. A nice run here early on. It doesn't take a great play call to realize you want to establish a guy of his caliber with runs like this early because they will pay dividends as the game progresses. 3-0 after one on EA Sports. Second quarter now, Titans in possession of the football. Operating from the 27 now, here's second and three. As they've got it as we resume action. In motion left goes Boy. And now a fake there on the jet sweep as they'll give to Pollard. And this won't be enough to pick up the first. A gain of two, third and one. If they're going to get a first down out of this, they're going to have to earn it because there's been tough going in the interior there. And here we are on third and one. Be prepared. Brace yourself. Could be some contact going on. Trying to run for it with Pollard. And he's able to get it to the 33. Good enough for a first down. And five yards on the play there as the drive will continue. Brandon, what were they thinking on defense there? They looked like they were playing for the pass. That was third and short. Yeah, it was an easy pickup because they handed it to him. That was way too easy. It just looked like absolute confusion defensively. Not sure why they were in that set. Yeah, I'd say you ought to have a few men in the box there. He completes it to Ridley. And he'll have it past midfield almost to the 40 before being taken down. Called at a very strong gain of 24. Nice grab there by Ridley, who made the move to Tennessee this offseason after recording over 1,000 yards and eight touchdowns in his lone season as a Jacksonville Jaguar. And now that the rust of the previous couple of years has worn off, the Titans, they're certainly hoping he can take it a step further in 2024 in Nashville. Rudolph now to throw. Throwing the out route, finding Boyd for the completion. And he's going to be out of bounds down around the 35-yard line. Second down and three. Now a play fake, and it's Rudolph. He gets this one to Boyd. Back-to-back -back receptions for him, and it's another first down. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before he could get a good head of steam going. Rudolph throwing again. And that's complete to Westbrook Akine. And he'll go down right on the edge of the red zone following a pickup of about seven or eight.
Two yards to go, second down. Now it's Rudolph. This is caught. And it's a Titans touchdown. Calvin Ridley, a 20-yard touchdown. As his guys are able to extend their lead. Well executed there offensively. Defense looked a little confused, but he found his receiver. And that one good for six points. And the payoff we just saw there tells us how many times they ran this play in practice over the past few weeks because they executed that flawlessly right here on game day when the situation arose. Nick Folk for the point after. It's up and good, and that'll increase their lead to 10-zip. So an eight-play drive covering 80 yards. And it's Calvin Ridley who finishes it off with a touchdown reception. There's the Titan kick team as they run up and send this one away. And Detroit getting set to go now. Nothing for them yet from an offensive standpoint. Down 10 zip as they come up first and 10. They'll start on the ground with Montgomery. And he powers his way up past the 30. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. Well, it's time for them to be good teammates right here. And what I mean by that is possess the ball for a little while. Get at least two first downs. Give their defense a chance to settle down a little bit after they give up a touchdown. Now second and five. Out of the gun, Goff. He'll get this one to Patrick. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. That'll be a pickup of 10 as they try to recover from this 10-point deficit. And that's a more than acceptable read right there because it's zone coverage, so timing is everything. This time he waits for his man to come open, puts it right on him, and they pick up a first down. In motion goes Raymond. Back to throw, Goff. And that's to Amon Ross St. Brown. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. Back-to-back -back nice plays, 12 yards that time and a first down. Even against double coverage, he found enough of an opening for a noticeable gain. Two guys on him, yet he finds a way to uncover downfield for the completion. And motion left goes a tight end. Goff now to throw. And incomplete, a drop there in the middle third of the field. That'll bring up second down. A misconnection there. He's hit on just 50% of his passes thus far. That's not where you want to be. Now you see the evolution of the game. You go back to the quarterbacks of old, 50% would be terrific because they threw the ball downfield almost every time they threw it. Now with the short passing game, you should be above 60% just to be in the average range. To throw is golf. Oh, he dropped it. They were looking for him in the middle third. He couldn't catch it. Now third down. Fair to say, hasn't been his best game throwing the football, but also not getting a lot of help out there either. Yeah, you kind of you nailed it pretty well, you know. He's got to throw it better. Got to get more help. Obviously one that should have been caught. They got to find a way to bring those, those two elements together so they can make some progress in this one. Goff now looking to throw. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Titans 33. 14 yards that time for number 14. Yeah, these are the types of plays they're going to need to hit on if they're going to get back into this game. It hasn't been the greatest of first halves, but this is a nice throw here on third down, and they keep the drive going. 
This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and ten. Up the middle, it's Montgomery. 40 yards rushing for him now to this point. That's a strong pickup right there on first down. And as this drive goes on, we're seeing an offensive line and running game imposing its will. Second down and four. Gone. Over the middle and taken in by Laporta. And he's going to be touched down, but he's got the first down. And the tight end is certainly a position built to move the chains because they can control space underneath. If they've got good hands, then, of course, they're a dynamic target. But one other thing is they're right in the sight lines of a quarterback on just about every play. And that makes it easier for the quarterback to pick him out and deliver. Now it's gone. Throwing middle, but it's incomplete. Now a second and ten. Here's Goff. Open man right side is St. Brown. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little gain. They get seven out of that, so they're left with a third and three. They'll run it. Here's Montgomery. And he picks up the first as he's able to take it down to the seven-yard line. Five yards is the pickup there as that extends this drive. That solid gainer will put them on the doorstep of the end zone. More importantly, it gives them a fresh set of downs. Nice work right there. First and goal, and they got to be thinking a chance to get right back into this football game. Now golf. Now he's got it. A gain of seven that time. Second and goal. When you decide to run a hitch route, it really helps have a guy who can turn it loose. And boy, he rifled one in there on that one. Not much run after catch, but it worked really well. Good yardage on first down. Now can they punch it in on second and goal? Gibbs. Diving for the end zone. He is in. Touchdown. Well, Brandon, he just followed his nose, and his nose took him to the end zone. But how about the big guys up front giving him at least a stalemate in order to find that space? Yeah, the O-line won the battle in the trenches there, didn't they? Point after here, coming up. And they're back within a field goal. It's 10-7 now. So that drive spans 13 plays. And it was all capped off by a touchdown run from Jameer Gibbs. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. And makes it across the 20 as his guys will set up shop at the 23-yard line. Mason Rudolph leading this offense out for their next possession. Five for five that last drive. Touchdown pass as well. He was clicking. Receivers, I don't want to be cliche, but running really solid routes too. And what I love about it is when you look across any team, all right, the body types of the receivers are usually different. The way that they get open, different as well. Some of them use power to get open. Some of them use those head fakes and subtle moves. Some of them just use pure speed. And the really good ones, when they're established, they know how to push off at the end of a route, too. Not sure what happened out there, but it looked like the timing was a little off on that throw. Well, you know I'm a defender, so what am I going to say? Great defense. And darn right, they did something to disrupt that timing. Four minutes to play here in quarter number two. 
Out of the gun to give to Pollard. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. It's a loss of four. Now third down. The running lanes have definitely not been there for him here in the first half, and I don't think it's all been his fault. His offensive line hasn't given him much space. A loss results there. The Titans on third down. They've converted three out of five thus far. This is third and 14. He's going to look deep down the field. And he knocks the ball away, and it falls incomplete. Well, they came up with points in their first two possessions, but it looks like they'll come up empty here on their third drive. The defense finally starting to get locked into them a little bit. Might have to go a little bit deeper into their playbook on their next possession. On uh, fourth down, Ryan Stonehouse on the punt. And a fair catch called for and made just inside the 35-yard line. So possession goes over here on the punt, and the Lions will take over. Detroit's offense ready to take over. Good drive last time, really effective passing the football. Do you maybe mix it up, now go to the ground game and surprise the defense a little bit? I would anticipate the defense making some changes, but I wouldn't necessarily just absolutely go in the opposite direction. They're doing so well throwing the ball. Yeah, well, I'm I wouldn't it. change it up until they showed me a reason to do so. He'll get this to about the 38. I feel like I could see what he was thinking on that carry. He wanted to follow that big tackle through the hole. Ended up only getting four yards on the carry. I think he had designs on that one being bigger. Second down and six now. There's Goff. Finding the open man, and that's Tim Patrick. And he'll be out of bounds after getting this one across the 40. Timing is so important on a route like this because he's going to line up out right and then cut straight across the field. I think the ball might have come out a counter two too late because by the time he was able to secure it, not much of a chance to turn it upfield. On third and short to give it a tight end. And he brings this up to the 46. Good enough for the first. They're able to convert with a gain of four. How about that there? No frills, no additives, right? Nothing crazy. Just find a way to pick up the first down. A nice run right there. Two minutes remaining in the first half. 10-7, our score. Now gone. That's into the hands of Khalif Raymond. And they'll get to him after a gain of seven to the 47. Here's second and three. They'll fake the handoff. Now Goff. A quick throw there is incomplete. Those are the ones you dream of as defenders. I think if he gets eyes on the ball a little bit earlier, he might come away with it. Instead, it's going to wind up as just an incomplete pass. So the incomplete pass on the last play, and that leads us to a third and three. Golf. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man to play. And he is going to have a Lions first down, and he was able to get it by play. A gain of eight on third and three. I don't care how many times we see it, I still get a kick out of watching quarterbacks and receivers do the pass tree in pregame warm-up. But I always remember that when we go to practices, we see that after practices as well. They really tune it up, don't they? They tune it up. They know why they do it for these situations. First down. And they build that trust, and that's why they're able to find him in this type of a situation. A little short pass here taken in by LaPorta. And he is out of bounds, but not before he's inside the 30. The Lions passing game in sync now. They've got another first down. He's certainly done a nice job spreading the field on this drive, and here he finds his big tight end for good yardage. And that's what you have to do. Keep defenses guessing about where you're going to go with the football. Again, golf. 
They'll set up the screen to Montgomery. And he'll get it down this time in the 17. The Lions will use the first of their timeouts as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. Options galore here, second and a few inches. Here's Gaw. Now that'll be caught by St. Brown. The Lions now going to use the second of their timeouts as the clock stops here with 46 seconds remaining in the first half. And the throw and the catch were just fine, but again, zone coverage when you run a drag route, what you're hoping for is he makes the catch and makes someone miss, and they don't there. Very difficult route to run when everyone has their eyes back towards the quarterback and they're able to see the route develop. They'll bring one of the tight ends in motion left. They'll fake the give. Now Goff. There's the point out. He's got it. Touchdown, Lions. A nine-yard touchdown there. And the Lions will take the lead here in the final minute of the first half. This is why a lot of play callers love play action in this spot. You just want to freeze the linebackers just for a second. Then you've got a chance to get a quick pass into your tight end right behind them for a touchdown. And now, of course, all scoring plays are reviewed. And I think they're going to take an extra long look at this one. They're taking a peek at whether or not those feet were in bounds, and obviously a big call here in the end zone. And not just the feet. How about the hands? How is the ball possessed while the feet are hopefully getting down in bounds? That's what they're trying to look at to see if it all comes together. So they called it a touchdown originally, and this will stay a touchdown after the video review, so they had it right. Now for the point after. And that makes it 14-10. A 10-play drive that time. And the end result, a Detroit touchdown. Now to kick this one away, and off it goes. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get this up to the 29. The Titans going to go back on offense here late in this first half with his slim deficit closing in on the end of the first half. We'll see if they can move this at least into field goal range and try to get three out of this drive. to their timeouts as the clock will stop with 34 seconds to go before halftime. Second down and a yard. Rudolph now to throw. And the Lions pressure too strong. Down he goes. He couldn't get away. He'll wind up losing a dozen yards, a 12-yard loss, and it brings up third. Okay, I'm not sure you could actually draw a better pass rush than that one right there. Nowhere to go outside. He had to keep backing up and backing up and backing up. Eventually dropped for a huge loss. They'll send a big tight end in motion right. So we've reached halftime here in Detroit with the Lions out on top. As we'll send you down to Orlando, we check in with Jonathan Coachman for our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. 
Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. Back to you guys in a bit. But first, we welcome everyone to our EA Sports Halftime Report. The Lions got a very strong performance out of their quarterback, Jared Goff. He connected on a touchdown pass in that first half, and that's a big part of why his guys lead at the break. Okay, Coach, yeah, adjustments likely going to play a big role in this third quarter in what's been a tight contest so far. The Lions in the lead, and they're going to get the football first as well as the second half is underway. And able to get this out to the 25. The Lions offense and Jared Goff set to take over once more. And he's been a nightmare to scheme against throughout this one. This defense has been totally taken apart. And that is borne out in his numbers. He's been terrific all game long. The Detroit offense ready to begin their drive. Goff now looks to throw. Oh, the ball comes out on the hit, but they'll say it's incomplete. I think he had to unload that one before he wanted to. He was right up in his grill. I think he was a dentist there without a license, don't you? <laughs> Just not enough time for the play to develop. Just lucky it wasn't a fumble, really. An incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25. Running left, Montgomery. Oh, he's got a little daylight. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. 66 yards on the ground for him now on nine carries. A big hole there. How about him handling the point of attack? Just positioning himself so that, that run could go right off of his backside and deep into the secondary. Now on first down, he'll drop to throw it. His throw incomplete. It's rare that a receiver of his caliber would drop one pass, but that's now two times he's had his mitts on one and lost it. Yeah, and I don't think that they're going to lose confidence in him, though, because of the track record. Such a good player, maybe having a bad game, but I think they'll still go to him in a critical spot. A shotgun snap for Goff. That's to the tight end, Laporta. That'll leave them with a third and two coming up. They got eight yards there. I know sometimes we can get fooled when we watch him make catches as we just saw him do there because he really looks like a wide receiver the way he goes about his business. Yeah, 230, 240 range. Yeah, not, not super huge. Maybe not counted on to be that inline point of attack blocker that we used to have in the good old days, but you can flex him out. You can run wide receiver routes with him. You can make him a primary target, and that's how he'll show the defense. He continues to deliver a first down here. He had four catches in the first half, and this one number five. Got to say, I was a little surprised to see him, Charles, come out in the shotgun on third and less than a yard. Yeah, but the way the NFL is nowadays, we hardly ever see anyone really run for it on short yardage. So they're going to throw the football more times than not. That was a nice, easy rhythm throw right there, and they pick up the first down. Goff throwing again. Open that is Raymond. He's got it. And he's going to get this down near the 20-yard line. Just his second catch of the game so far. This one moves the chains. Well, they obviously red man covers their partner, and he got downfield, broke down the defender, made him what think. What do you mean by that? Broke yeah, up. he made him think he was going to run a different route, probably thought he was going to take it upfield, and then he curls back inside for the completion. Goff now to throw. That's complete to the Porta. And he'll get into the end zone. Touchdown, Detroit. Sam Laporta. His second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Lions take the opening kickoff of the third quarter and drive right down the field to extend their lead. That seemed pretty ideal there for the offense, Charles. You take a little bit of time off the clock here in the third quarter, decent length drive, and you pad your lead as well at the end of it. And what it does is let you feel like you're in control of this game even more so than a two-touchdown lead, right? Because you have taken that time off, as you noted, which means they couldn't get you off the field. You ran your playbook the way you wanted to, and you gave your defense some rest. What a big-time drive in that situation. 
Extra point right down the middle. And that makes it a 21-10 game. So that drives seven plays in length. And it's capped off by a touchdown for the Lions. now as they line up and kick this one away. And up to about the 26-yard line, just across the 25. The Titans offense gears up for their first possession of the second half. And their deficit a little wider than it was at halftime. Does that touchdown a minute ago change the thinking here at all? I think it does, at least a little bit, because now urgency has to start setting in you can't go out there and go three and out and run the risk of falling behind substantially but you have to do it without pressing because pressing that will lead you into bigger errors open man Westbrook Aquino and they get him down but not before he takes it across the 40 yard line that's a good way to start the drive 17 yards and a first down and this is what they're going to need more of it's the third quarter. You're trailing. You've got to come out with a renewed sense of purpose. And that's a nice way to kick off the drive with good yardage and a first down. They'll send a receiver in motion left. Now he's going to get it on the jet sweep. Stopped up shy of the 45 despite some pretty powerful running. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. Let's just make this one succinct. Nice job there, all 11 guys on defense. Diagnosing the jet sweep and putting it down. Second and nine from the 44. Here's Rudolph. And he will find Ridley on the left side. And he'll be corralled out across midfield down to the 45. 12 yards there as they keep this drive rolling. It's another first down. And that's the kind of play this offense needs to maybe kick them into gear a little bit. They've been stuck in neutral much of the game. Perhaps that can give him a little bit of confidence the big plays are out there. Rudolph looking to throw it. That'll be complete to a Conquo. So five yards here, five on the play. And that'll bring up second down. Nice rhythm throw there on first down. He located his tight end, made a nice easy pitch and catch. Hoping he can break a tackle or two. Wasn't able to do that there, but still good yardage. Second and five. Back to throw Rudolph. And that's complete to Westbrook Aquino. And he gets it down to the 32. Seven yards there at a first down. They'll run left with Pollard. And he will lose yardage back to the 34-yard line. The tackle for a loss goes to Kirby Joseph, making a great play. This defense is just flat getting after it. They have not given up much of anything in the run game. Case in point right there. A rare misstep on that last play because the drive has been strong, but now it's second and 12. Now Rudolph. They'll drop this underneath to Pollard. And he'll be a little shy of the 25 here at the 26-yard line. That'll give him eight that time. And now it's third and four. Rudolph looking to throw. And this is going to be incomplete. I like the call. It looked like the right time to dial up a running back screen. But this one got disrupted right from the start and ends up falling incomplete. Here's Nick Falk now on for the field goal. He hit his first. Now this from 43. Folks, kick is good. But now there is a penalty marker on the field. So let's see what this is about. And this is going to be roughing the kicker, an inexcusable penalty, Charles. You've worked so hard to hold him to a three-point kick. Now you give him the ball again with a chance for a touchdown. So 
So a special team's mistake on the field goal try leads to a new set of downs inside the red zone. And they'll send Boyd in motion left. And they'll fake it on the jet sweep, and instead a handoff up the middle. And here he'll get it down to the seven. It's a six-yard pickup, but it gets him to second and four. Sometimes with the running game, you've just got to stick with it. Look, it's the third quarter, no time to panic. But that also doesn't mean you just do it the same way you've been doing it the entire ball game. Maybe change up some blocking assignments or run a few different plays, but stay with the overall essence of the running game. They go back to Pollard on second down, and he's brought down right at the five-yard line. Give him two on the play. Well, they still have time to get him established, but in my estimation, they've got to pick up the urgency here. They've got to get quickly in and out of the huddle and run off a bunch more plays. Two yards still to go. Third down now. Here's Rudolph. And he'll just get rid of it. Detroit was up for the challenge through the air. They force a fourth down. The frustration evident there because he couldn't find anyone on third down, and he left no doubt that he was throwing that one away. Here's Nick Folk now on for the field goal. From the right hash here, should be an easy one. And Folk's kick is good, and that'll make this an eight-point game. So the response to that touchdown on the other side to begin the third quarter, look, just three points, but still a response nonetheless. You're exactly right about that because I think you needed to answer back with something, even though it's not six. Just enough to send the message that says, hey, we're not going away. There's the Titan kick team as they run up and send this one away. And a decent return out to the 27-yard line. The Lions offense and their quarterback set to take the field once more. And we'll take you through some of the highlights here. You'll notice he had a hand in a lot of them so far. He's got this offense rolling right now. The Lions offense ready to kick off their next drive. They have played so strongly. You look at the scoreboard, you, you probably, with the way they played, you would think the margin would be a lot bigger, right? You would. And in your experience, how many times have we run into coaches where they've talked about, hey, we just want to put it in the hands of our defense and have them win the game? In this case, yeah, not the case. Not at all. You want to put it in the hands of your offense, but you always feel better about seeing defense because you think defense is a constant and offense kind of comes and goes. Today, <laughs> this game, no, they need their offense to stay on a really hot level. They've been hot so far. And he'll take this to the 32, a gain of about three. They'll come up facing third and five. Goff now looking to throw. And that's to the left sideline and incomplete. Yeah, that's a nice job there defensively to blank of those receivers on third down. And as a quarterback, all you can do is just loft one toward the bench, not too close, mind you, and live to punt the football. Here comes the Lions punter now as he's on here to punt it away. The call for a fair catch, and it's made at about the 23-yard line. Out come the Titans now. Their drive last time, it stalled out. They were forced to take the short field goal. And the key phrase, you nailed it. Forced to, because you know coaches look at these short field goals as a last resort, right? To them, that's not how drives are supposed to end. You're supposed to put six on the board. That's a consolation prize, like going to the county fair. You don't get the big stuffed animal on that one, do you? No, you don't go top shelf. That's bottom shelf material. 
They'll start on the ground with Spears. Fighting through it. He's got space. And he's going to be out up around the 45-yard line. That good for 22 and a first down. Pardon, if you want more carries, I think we saw how you get them. Showed that he's got the fresh legs, and he picked up the first down on that run. Don't just ask for him. Show him that you're supposed to get the football. The big play to start him out. Has him at the 45 already. Now it's Rudolph. Throw right side caught by Ridley. And he goes out of bounds. It looks like right at the 50. Give him a gain of five on the completion, and that'll make it second down. They like going to him in the slot. He catches another one. I think this comes under the heading of until they stop him, why not go back to him? He has something going really well. Great working relationship with the guy throwing the ball, and they keep making the connection. Now flags will come in. I think this one's going to be on the defense for jumping. A little antsy on the left side of the line. Yeah, I think they got the guy in the end. I think they got the DN there on that one. And let's face it, he is so amped up. Wanting to get a good get off on the snap. Jump too quickly. Hand off to Spears. And he'll lose yardage here, back at the 47. It's a loss of two, now third down. I like the strategy. Extra tight ends, extra beef, they want to run the football. But that means they probably want to run it inside. If you get strung out on the perimeter, you're in peril. Yeah, we saw the result, negative yardage. On third down, it's Pollard. And he has the first down yardage before they bring him down right at the 45. Give him three yards and a fresh set of downs. I'd say they've got to find a way to get him going. He's such a big part of their offense. I wonder if they might throw it a little and come back to the run. Anything, because you're right. He's pretty much been completely neutralized. From the gun, here's Rudolph. A short throw taken in by Conquo. They'll wind up getting just a yard at its second down. It certainly feels like there are more stars at the tight end position than there were even 10 years ago. And I think it's become more of a glamour position because of the ways it can hurt a defense, and guys want to be involved. They can be in line, close to the line of scrimmage. They can split out like receivers. But hands, route running, speed, and some toughness to go across the middle, you put it all together, you get a heck of a tight end candidate. Give him 10 yards there as this offense is on a roll. This drive continues to plunge forward. That was a route run not just with dexterity, but with intelligence. Found the hole in the zone, made sure the quarterback saw him, and was able to make the sure catch and flip the down marker back to one. Pollard will take it up the gut and fights through one man. And the stiff arm made it a pretty little run, not a huge gain, but a nice chunk of yardage. It's a six-yard gain on the ground, and that'll make it second and four. Kid had a ton of success here so far, but you get the feeling that he might be on the verge of popping one. Yeah, even on that one, there was a little bit of a hole, but it closed there quickly at the end. From the 29, Rudolph. And he will find Ridley. That's complete. And it's going to be another first down as they'll get him to the ground at the Lions' 13-yard line. That'll put him at 95 receiving yards now as he's got a first down. And they're not going to get to the line to run another play. So we will switch ends as the third quarter has come to a close. We'll return with more after this break. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now at Ford Field. It's Titan football here as they trail to begin the fourth quarter. From the 13 now, they work on first and 10. They'll set up a throw. And that's going to be incomplete. Too tough to hold on to that one. It's second down. As this old brain remembers, when I see five wide receivers on the field as a defender, I know the ball's coming out hot. They expected it and got there and popped it free. Here's second and ten.
It'll be a handoff to Pollard. And a pickup of about four down inside the 10 to the 8-yard line. This offense so far on third down, not quite 50%. Four for nine. This will be third and six. Looking middle, and that's complete. And the Titans are going to have first and goal as they try to finish off this drive with six points. Well, they've had a great, impressive drive going here, and that pickup ensures the drive continues. And not only do you continue the drive, which is demoralizing for the guys on the defense side of the ball right now, but you make your own defense happy. They're able to get a little more rest over on the sidelines while this one continues downfield. Pollard is in. Touchdown, Tennessee. So part one of what they needed is done. They get in the end zone. Now you have to imagine we'll see a try for two. And that's what the book says, but defensively, they can't hang their head right here. They still got a chance to come out with the lead if they make a play. Here we go now as we get set for a big two-point conversion. They'll look to throw, and they don't get it. They tried for the two-point conversion there, but unsuccessful. And the failure to convert and tie the game, now the pressure shifts back to the defense. But I think it was the right play. I think it was the right call to try and tie the game there. Kick an extra point, you're still down one. What's the sense? I, I like what they did. There's the Titan kick team as they run up and send this one away. And they'll get him down inside the 30 at the 27. The home team's offense and their quarterback headed out for this next possession. And he has been masterful so far in leading this offense. He's kept the mistakes to a minimum. He's been on point with his passes. And he's generally been one step ahead of this defense all game long. The Detroit offense ready to begin their drive. And they've seen their lead nearly extinguished after that last score. But bottom line, they are still on top with the football. And a touchdown on this drive would really put them in position A. Give them three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. And for the defense, this is a spot where you don't want to totally sell out to stop the run. But you do have a pretty good idea of what you're going to see. And that's good work right there to keep them in check on that first down carry. Back to Montgomery on second down. And they get him behind the line. So that short gain on first down quickly negated. This will be a loss of three. And now a much tougher third down looming. Now that's a nice play. <laughs> Got me fired up, partner. But can they do it back-to-back -back plays? All the training that you go through as a defense for these situations, when you have to get the ball back, everything you go through, holding up the runner, raking it in the football, getting to the passer, knocking it out of his hands, whatever way, they have to get the ball back. Now can they stand tall again for a huge fourth quarter stop? critical play in this football game because if they pick up the first there that clock keeps rolling has to be a little frustrating for them because they know that if they pick up a first down there and continue to eat away at the clock really increases their chances of closing this one out now they're likely gonna have to give the football up and sweat it out on the sideline and a fair catch signaled for and taken successfully here's tennessee ready to begin this drive offensively and you sense the tide turning. They scored, then their defense forced the punt, and now a chance to ultimately take the lead here late. They'll come out throwing here on first down. This is caught. It's Boyd. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. 
A good pick up there, 26 yards. And here we are in the fourth quarter, partner, and watch them drive for what would be a go-ahead touchdown. And you and I both know, this is where you need a quarterback who can keep his cool back there, not just for himself, but to keep the rest of the team relaxed too. So the ball moves into Lion territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 47. They run straight ahead here with Pollard. And not a whole lot of room to operate there on the first down run. He gets maybe three. And they'll come up second and seven. Rudolph. Akakia holds it in left side. And he'll cross over out of bounds right at the 25. Fifth catch of the afternoon, and that gives him a first down. Fifth catch of the game for him there. Yeah, and the tight end position is now becoming a volume pass catcher. It used to be occasional, right, safety valve, throw one to him every so often, but more, mainly they want him out there to block. Nowadays, an integral part of the passing game, and they create such great mismatches that they often become the leading receiver. That's going to wind up a loss of a full three yards on first down. I like the idea to mix it up from time to time because, let's face it, you can't be predictable. But the execution was a little lacking on this one, right? They might want to go back to the drawing board with that call. After the loss, they'll come up second and 13. Rudolph now to throw. A short throw taken in by Conquo. It's a pickup of 12, and that'll set up a third down. That coach is always harp on the quarterback reading the defense and getting it to the open man. That's good recognition there. And how about what he did after the catch? Yeah, hit your tight end, let him get some rack. Yeah, when he, when he gets moving, not many guys want to come over and put a hit on him, do they? On third and short, they'll try and pick it up through the air. And this pass broken up. And the contact well of time there, and now fourth down. He did a fine job there of not hitting him before the ball arrived, and I've got to tell you, you can often mistime that play because of the angles of approach. When you're going to get him, sometimes you panic as well and think, I've got to be there right now. Instead, in this case, timed it perfectly and knocked it free. So the drive here ends with a field goal. It does give them the lead, but this one's still certainly a long ways from over. It definitely puts a lot of pressure on your defense to hold the lead, right? They're happy to have it and happy to be out there trying to do so. But I know as a former player, in the back of their mind, they're thinking, why don't you score the touchdown and seal this thing? The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. And they will wrangle them down a couple yards shy of the 30. The home team's offense and their running back getting set to go once more. And he has put in a full game's work and then some. Just an incredible performance on the ground to this point in the fourth quarter. The Lions offense ready to kick off their next drive. And now they find themselves trailing following the field goal. Still a good amount of time in this fourth quarter, but this drive very well could determine the outcome of this ball game. And brought down, but not before reaching the 45-yard line. 88 yards rushing for him now as he has been tremendous all day long. Another carry for their leader and a good one. It's crunch time. They'll need him to continue to be productive in both the run and passing game in order for them to try and snatch a victory. First down, they run again. Here's Montgomery. And he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. They went right back to him, but he pretty much had nowhere to go on that play. Yeah, the previous carry looked pretty good. That one, maybe he was a little tired. I don't know. Yeah, maybe he should have tapped out and had a second back come in and maybe make that run. Who knows? Second down and eight. Now it's gone. And this is incomplete. Now 
And this offense on third down today, now they've converted seven times and could use another right now. This is third and eight. To throw is golf. Pass to the sideline and pulled in. And he goes down, but not before getting this inside the 25. Give him 30 yards there. That could very well be a defining play in this game. A touchdown, that gives them the lead, and they took a major step towards getting there with that big play right there. So the big play gets them all the way down to the outskirts of the red zone here for first and 10. Play action. It's gone. Throw left side, caught by Laporta. He'll head out of bounds inside the 10, marking down at the 9. That's over 40 yards of movement with those last two plays. How about the way they're moving the ball down the field? They had a big play a moment ago, followed it up with another nice one here, and before you know it, they're already looking at first and goal. They'll run with Gibbs. Only about a yard there as he takes it from the 9 to the 8. The yards may start getting a little tougher to come by down here near the goal line. That's good work defensively there on first down, holding them to a short gain. Here's second and goal, operating from the eight-yard line. Quick toss by Goff is complete, and he'll get this down inside the five to the four before he's out of bounds. That time the completion goes for four yards and we're set up with a third and goal. Well, they're unable to convert that into much, but it's never a bad idea to try to get the ball into a tight end of his caliber's hands and see what kind of disruption he can cause. Now Goff on third and goal. And he takes this one in for a Lions touchdown. Jared Goff with his third touchdown pass of the afternoon. And the Lions have taken a fourth quarter lead. This has definitely been a back and forth affair, and now they have the lead here in the fourth quarter. Yeah, and they gave up the field goal on that last drive, as we remember, but it felt like their offense told them, don't worry about it, we've got your backs. We'll come back with a touchdown of our own, and they did. Did he keep those feet in bounds? That's the question they've got to decide. And I got to say, watching it in real time, it was awfully close. Yeah, it certainly looked like a heck of a catch because he didn't appear to bobble it, which could complicate things. But even with the benefit of replay, that's pretty tight. Well, here's the call. Now a big two-point conversion attempt still to come. Now they'll bring one of their tight ends in motion right. Goff looking to throw. And this one's caught. And their fourth quarter lead grows by a couple more. So they go with the pass, and it works there on the two-point try. Charles, just in general, what are your thoughts passing versus running on two-point conversion? Situational? It is situational. You have to know your team. What is your strength? Because so many people think you have to throw the ball in a two-point conversion, but the stats will tell you that running it is about as proficient. So know your team and go to your strength. is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. And he'll be stopped up at the 25. Here's the Titan offense now as they make their way back onto the field. And now after the touchdown a moment ago, they work from behind in a seven-point game in this fourth quarter. Plenty of time on the clock. Here's
Here's Rudolph. Sideline throw. It's complete. And a nice job there of keeping the toes inbounds. A gain of eight there on the play. And they'll be left with second and a couple. I do have to admit, I like it when it all comes together. When the top part, catching the football, right? Whether you're catching it with your hands or cradling it, comes together with the legs. In this case, the feet did a little toe tap to stay in bounds and complete the catch. And a great job by our crew on the camera shot. Love when you see the grass or on the field turf, those rubber pellets flying up. Great catch. Second and two is prime time for a little bit of a gamble, isn't it? Open up the playbook. Go play action. Toss that bad boy deep. But in this situation, go ahead and give it to your back. Let him pick up a first down. Keep the sticks moving. First down, and it's Pollard again. And he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. Typically, we think it's the strong safeties that are better tacklers, especially closer to the line of scrimmage amidst traffic. But in this case, how about the free safety coming up and making the big-time play? Ball on the 40 now. Here's second down and seven. They'll drop the throw. And his throw is going to be incomplete. One of the bigger plays in the game thus far. The crowd getting into it as we come up on a big third down. Rudolph looking to throw it. And under the Lions pressure, he's brought down. It'll go as a sack, a loss of three, and in turn, it takes us to a fourth down. And, partner, it's safe to say that the secondary really contributed to that sack. Yeah, nickel set, five defensive backs. They covered everything. Nowhere to go with the football. But my question is, why didn't he throw it away? Here's Ryan Stonehouse now as he's on to punt for Tennessee. Fair catch signaled for and taken at about the 15-yard line. Here's the Lion offense now as they get ready to take over. Their defense got the stop, forced the punt, and now you really start to monitor the clock as they nurse this slim lead. Goff and this Lions offense set for a first and 10 at their own 15. They'll try and start this drive in the air. This to Laporta, right side. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. That one good for 37 yards. And the offense is saying to itself right now, if only they were all this easy because he was wide open. And once he made the catch, plenty of room to work his way downfield. That was a breakdown on the defensive side of the ball, one that they want to fix immediately. Not totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and 10. Going up the gut, Montgomery. And I think this defense knew what was coming as he is smothered behind the line. Fourth quarter, down to the final two minutes, and we've got a one-score game. So the Lions in possession of the football as we welcome you back. They've got a second down now as they search for a way to get this one to the finish line. He'll be taken down at the 48 for a pickup of two yards. The Titans going to use the first of their timeouts. That'll leave them with two remaining. We'll be back after this. This is a big third down, and you'd have to think we'd see a timeout right away if they can't stop him here. Again, they'll go ground with Montgomery. And whistles, and we're going to have another stoppage of play as they call the timeout on defense with 1.53 left. Three, four, three, four, three, four. 
Here comes the Lions punter now as he's on for the fifth time here today. And this punt sails over the sideline. And the spot, it looks to be right at the 25-yard line. The Titans offense and Mason Rudolph make their way back out. And you get a look at the numbers, and they don't even tell the whole story. This has been a tremendous performance to this point. They'll come up first and ten here. Throwing here, Rudolph. And this will be incomplete. Physical play on the football there, and it's second down. Work with me, partner. Take a deep breath, because that's what they're doing down the field now. That incompletion allowed them to exhale a little bit. Get in the huddle, kind of scan the crowd, see if any celebrities are here. Relax a little bit as they start this big drive. Now Rudolph. A short throw taken in by Conquo. Not good. They didn't move the football an inch and precious time ticking off the clock. The sound reverberating here in the dome. This is third down. Rudolph. Complete. Pollard. And he's going to be stopped here a few yards short of the first as the tackle is made at the 33. Nothing open downfield. They went underneath. Yeah, see if you can get it to your running back. See if he can make someone miss in the open field. The decision made for them. They've got to go. It's fourth down. Here we go on fourth. Rudolph. That is caught. He's got room at the 30. Down the right sideline. And yes, he's into the end zone. So they get the late score they needed. And now the extra point can tie this thing up in the final minute. And while it appears the heavy lifting was accomplished by scoring the touchdown, they're still down one. That extra point is not a gimme. On for the extra point is Folk. And we are tied here in the fourth quarter. The drive summary, four plays, 75 yards. And the touchdown and PAT mean we are tied here in the final minute of play. This one, all we could have asked for. All tied, final minute as the kick's away here. Oh, a dangerous return man showing it here. And a good return, able to get out across the 35 to the 36. And Detroit getting set to go now. They need to get this around the 40 on the other side to get into field goal range. Look at the clock, a decent amount of time here in a tie game. What do they do? No panic situation at all. They've got to get a couple of chunk plays, pick up nice bits of yardage. Target the sidelines. Target the sidelines because you want to get out of bounds and make sure that clock stops. Because if the clock stays running, that makes things that much tougher for you. It can always bleed out on you. Now it's golf. A little short pass here taken in by Laporta. The Lions will use the first of their timeouts as they'll stop him with a little over 30 ticks to go in the football game. Here's second down and three. Goff now to throw. They're able to get this to Patrick. And he's able to take it across midfield before going out of bounds. 
He's been a busy man here in this one, and they're showing off some nice footwork to stay in bounds. And with those types of catches and the volume that we've seen in this game, wouldn't you keep him busy as well? I would. Of course. you got to <laughs> keep throwing it to him. He keeps making plays. Now Goff. Going underneath. Gibbs has it. Here comes second down. Golf. And they will not get the connection there. It's incomplete. So four quarters wasn't enough, and we are off to overtime. Don't change that dial. So the Lions, now they'll get the first crack at things here in overtime as we are back underway. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. The Lions offense set to take over. Goff in this Lions offense, set for a first and 10. Just shy of the 30. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. And that one going to come up short, low throw. As defensive coordinators around the league tell me all the time, that throw is not for every quarterback because you've really got to drive the ball downfield. It's going to be a tight window for him to fit that one into, in this case, unsuccessfully. Here's Goff. Got St. Brown running the quick slam here. Five yards, now it's third and five. I think as he began this throw, you saw that the area was congested, but he has a lot of confidence in his arm, and he fits that one in there nicely. They pick up the catch. Not much yardage afterwards. And they need five yards on third down here to keep this opening drive of OT alive. Off play action. Here's Goff. Looking deep downfield. And the defense loses him. It's complete. Touchdown, Detroit. And that's a heck of a response to regain the lead after we had seen the touchdown to tie the game. I would say what we just saw there was a great amount of poise because typically when teams tie the game up, it's a little bit of a, how would you say, you kind of kind of take a step back and have to get yourself regrouped. They regrouped in a hurry, didn't they? They attacked back after they'd been tied. And in a big way, that was a statement-long touchdown. The extra point splits the uprights, and they will take a seven-point lead. So they only needed three plays on that drive. And the end result, a Detroit touchdown. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. And the tackle going to be made right there at the 25-yard line. And here comes Tennessee as they get set to take the field. 
This drive here beginning probably with a pair of motivated groups. Remember, the offense scored a touchdown on their last time out. Look at repeat that in Charles's defense. They were very frustrated after giving up six the last time on the field. And frankly, it's just a battle of wills in a lot of ways because you know they're both motivated. They both game plan for this drive, and they both have specific outcomes in mind. To me, it just comes down to who can execute better and which side can step up and assert its will over the other. To the sideline and incomplete. And I can see the officials kind of looking at each other down there, silently wondering, does this meet the level of grounding? Fortunately, he did have a receiver in the area, but I have seen less obvious throwaways called as penalties. So the incompletion, and now it's second and 10, again from the 25-yard line. Now it's Rudolph. And this throw a bit late as he couldn't reach back for it. Well, they approached this drive with a lot of confidence after the last one ended up as a touchdown. But incompletions on their first two throws has them huddling up and trying to figure out a big play here on third down to get their momentum going again. Now they face a third and ten after back-to-back -back incompletions. Now Rudolph. Airing it out, looking for Ridley. And he backs it away and it falls down incomplete. After what they faced during this game where they've given up a ton of yards downfield, that has to be a measure of revenge right there for the secondary. They've been shredded throughout the game and finally forced an incompletion. A big call here in overtime. They're going for it on fourth down. Rudolph throwing again. Aaron it out, looking for Ridley. That's going to be knocked away and incomplete. 